Party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Brady Show. Welcome, Natalie. Oh, my gosh. Hot snooze. <laughs> Do I look fresh today? I don't you look tired today, look right? so fresh. Thank you. Oh, my God. Well, it's a whole new day. You're Much like... Thank you. It will. I'm going to flip you like a pancake. Um, ah, yeah. You don't have to be awake. Ah. If you want to partake. Mm-hmm. Breakfast ain't for corn, but you know you're going to want it when I... Anyway. Mm-hmm. It's on my new albums called Y'all Shut Up. Hashtag Grammy. Grammy! Grammy consideration. Hey, congratulations for that. Thank you. And you know, there's a song on there called Flip You Like a Pancake. Right. And the fact that these, these, uh, the Grammy community is just really flocking to this album just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. They are. They're flipping out. They are. How many people are in this Grammy? There's about 7,000 voters. Mm Mm-hmm. About nice. 7,000 voters, 6,500 to 7,000. And they're loving it. Of course, I'm Duh. sending them all pancakes. Right. And Aunt Jemima. Aunt Jemima. Yeah. I thought Aunt Jemima coming off that bottle was going to solve racism. It didn't? No. Oh. Apparently it not. You know why? Worked in my household. Yeah. <laughs> you know the whole if a tree. <laughs> Is that what did it? <laughs> I, I, we were non-racist uh, <laughs> were long you? before. No, Steve sure, was racist before, Steve. and now he's not. Sure. Oh, I'm you doing the white think, power sign. Oh. Sorry. I mean, how are you supposed to sarcastically go, sure, Steve, <laughs> sure, <laughs> without being able to do the okay sign? I mean, see, they got us coming and going, not, man. They should have replaced... Aunt Jemima's face with like Obama, and they'd have been okay with it. All right. Right? Well, you. Well, let me be clear. So Eat we're just my take, them, take the face completely off there, and now there's no black face. You know how <laughs> if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's there to hear it, did it make a sound? What if there was a bird that heard it? What are we doing? I'm trying to make a point here, but Steve just going to run off on whatever. Yes, yeah, sound, sound waves were created. Okay, well, mm-hmm. if the Lakers won the NBA championship and nobody was there to watch it, <laughs> does anybody care about those communists? Nope. I don't think so. Are they in the? They're in the playoffs, though, right? No, they already won the championship. Oh shit! Exactly. No. <laughs> See. See, uh huh. Good job, Le- yeah. How Le- did those sound waves work out for you that time, party foul, Steve? <laughs> Good job, LeBron. You hadn't heard a damn thing about it until just now. He's the only person I know that plays for the Lakers. Yeah, I don't yes. even know. Who knows? Don't care. The communists love it. China, Poor. China, they love it. Don't care. Uh, I. You know what I want to do? I want to have a ra- Candace. I want to have a rabbit trail episode sometime. Where I just bring stuff up, and as I'm talking, I'll just let Steve just interject his random word vomit, and we'll just follow that trail. And we'll just see where it goes, and just keep on talking right on down the deal. Uh, probably a dark, deep hole. Yeah, a <laughs> dark, like today. a cavernous vag. Yeah. Oh. Vaginality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's what already happens during the breaks on this show. What's that? I feel like that's what already happens during the breaks on this show. Oh, yeah, that's true. Break, yeah, if people we were here, if they goes. could see what happens during the breaks. Um, oh, boy. See, because it's instant. If you're watching it on YouTube, the breaks are like that, and we're right back. But no, it usually takes us a while to reset some things. A lot of sounds coming out of going. all of our bodies. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, your body. No, <laughs> yeah. not just Speaking me. Speaking of deep, dark, cavernous places. Well, I don't want to be bloated. Oh, so I got to let all my gas out. <laughs> yeah. I got to let all my mouth farts out. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That's all you think that's happening. Man, 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 man. Let me tell you something. Uh, legal titles to your home, they're digitized and kept on government and business servers in the cloud where they can be hacked. And you have these cyber thieves out there that find your home's title. They forge your signature on a quick claim deed stating that you sold your home to them. And boom, that's right. 
Now they own it. You're off the title. They take out loans against your home until all your equity is gone, leave you in debt. You might even wind up with foreclosure or eviction. You, uh, you won't know until the collection calls pour in. You're not protected by insurance. Your bank or common identity theft programs. Home Title Lock protects you. Home Title Lock puts a barrier around your home's title. The instant they detect tampering, they help shut it down cold. Go to HomeTitleLock.com and register your address to see if you're already a victim. Then use code RADIO for 30 free days of protection. That's code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. Go check them out. Every time we talk about that home title lock, I always say you might get evicted. I don't think you can get evicted from a house you already own. <laughs> I think that's a rental. No, can you get evicted? Yes. I know you can get foreclosed. In uh, I think like states like California, if somebody else is getting like mail to yeah. your address, you can get evicted from your own home. Really? Yes. Okay, but that's California. Yeah, it's that's, not. It's like a whole other country. That's not even in the United States. I'm kidding. Oh. It's a I'm whole other kidding. country, man. I'm telling you, I want to build a wall. No. I want to build a wall. Yes. No to that. I want to build a wall around my mouth. Quit the burping. <laughs> Party time, mom. Um, I want to. I want. I want California, but I want to give Los Angeles and San Diego and San Francisco and Sacramento and Oakland. I want to give all that back to. Just give it to Mexico. They can have it. Okay. Mm -mm. Or wherever. Yeah. But. Rest of California, pretty good place. You know, I think there's a good chance that California could go red before long. Maybe this election. They might vote Republican. I think, think they're so sick of it. those big cities. You, the big cities that aren't. They screw it. You don't think so? Uh, no, they're I think people in the big cities starting to get sick of it. You know, last time I was in... They're getting hosed, man. Last time I was in San Francisco, I used the Fecal Map app. Did you? I did. Let you know where to go poop. It's like ways. <laughs> no, it's like ways for poop. But it tells you where the poop is on on the sidewalk, so you what? can avoid it. It tells you where True story. mass amounts of poop are. Yeah, I bet you walked over there and looked for it though, just I, to see if the map was right. And they were huge, but yeah, I did. <laughs> you but, did. You went to see if there was some man poop over there. I think it's supposed to avoid, but you know me. Did you mark any, like? Leave your own and what if that was like became mm -hmm. a thing to do? Like, you know how like it the subway, like there's certain walls in New York City where everybody sticks their gum. Oh. And so you just have like this whole big old thing just covered a wall covered in gum and that becomes a thing to do. What if that became like a tourist attraction, just a place to go poop in the streets well, in San Francisco? Is it not? Isn't it like the Brooklyn <laughs> Bridge where everybody hooks their lock on there? Like their there, Yeah, lock? like you put it on the put it on the fence or whatever, yeah. just go hook it on there. When they get in a relationship, they put their little lock on there. See, and if you become governor, these are the brilliant ideas. Some oh. that'll be thrown out there. Yeah, we'll just turn Austin into a whole poo station. <laughs> it's Everybody there. can go downtown on 6th and Congress and take a dump on the corner. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> it's a fantastic Ooh. idea. I mean, they're doing it already. Why not? You Great know, music, but it stinks a little. Listen, we want to be good socialists. Let's go out there and socialize. Let's go meet the poor where they live and live like them for a while. Oh, what they do is those cities buy them bus tickets to other cities and mm. send the homeless Just to move another them city. on, huh? Yeah. Then they shit on the bus. Yeah. They finally got a place to squat on the back of the bus. <laughs> They're not going to solve the problem. They just Have you noticed, though, it. how easy these people take a dump? Yeah, I mean, like right outside the restaurant, they just pull down their pants and poof. I can't they're like they like they're delivering the mail, man. It's like poof, there it goes, little little torpedo it just shoots right out, and they just pull their pants right back up and keep on going. I can't even pee if somebody's watching. I know, man. <laughs> like, and these people are out there having brunch and mimosas. So you can't poop on demand. And here, oh no, not like that. People, yeah. I mean, there are times little, when I can. Little anal retention there. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, there. The problem is I can't poop that quick. <laughs> I've Got trained it. my body that I need some reading time. You know what I mean? Okay. Say you gotta have a magazine. Yeah. The older I now, just my phone. Uh, the older <laughs> I get, you gotta be careful how long you sit on the toilet, man. You stand up, and it takes you like three minutes to feel your legs again. You gotta be careful when you yeah. start to take that first step. It's like a controlled fall. You hit, break your hip. 
Um, Listen to that rabbit trail we just went just down. Just I, I told y'all we were going to do it. It was my fault. <laughs> just not a quick pooper, I'll, man. I'll, I, Can't poop quick. My fault. Party time, Mom. Huh? Say horn. Yep. Somebody jumped on the Twitters, uh, and uh, <laughs> I love how they come at Sarah Gonzalez. I miss Sarah Gonzalez. She had her baby, of course, and so she'll be back here beautiful. pretty soon. So somebody said, Sarah, I read a post that your husband was seen at a strip club putting money down a stripper's garter. Your hubby needs to be at home changing dirty diapers. Hashtag not my president. Stephen Smith, her husband, said, I don't understand. Is he saying that I'm not his president? <laughs> and I said, that was me, dummy. <laughs> I down there at Sixth and Congress pooping and putting stripper garters on. Which strip club? I don't know. Man. He didn't know, even man. invite me. There's never details. The There's never details. Man. Yeah. She said, asterisk, Sarah responded, asterisk, work husband, duh. <laughs> <laughs> they know what's up, man. I was uh, pooping on that stripper. Oh, gosh. Ugh. It's better than the other way around, Steve. Some people are into that. Some Ugh. people are into that. I know. That is weird, man. <gasps> no. You might want to turn this one off and don't let the kids watch this I one. Can, you can Google search anything. Let's yeah. not. Let's not. So, <laughs> and it will pop up. Somebody's already thought of it. Okay. Yeah, anyway, that there really is. It's the, we live in a sick society, man. We got to get on the high road. We're better than this. We're. This is beneath you, <laughs> Chad. <laughs> this is we beneath need, we need you. More Jesus in our lives, not necessarily courtroom, but in our individual <laughs> lives. Steve doesn't want Jesus in the courts. I do a little more. Well, a little more. A little you more. You see. There is this thing called the Decalogue. It is the Ten Commandments. Ten words. And court systems and the law systems are based off of those Ten Commandments, right? So you can't get very far with the law without resorting to those original ten can't murder, That's can't true. covet, can't sure. steal, can't commit adultery. There's a lot of things out there that uh, can't you, lie on the stand. You still get penalized for that. There's a reason why when somebody takes an oath of office, they put their hand on a Bible mm -hmm. or whenever they're sworn into court, you know, it or they kind of lost other, all of that Bible thing, though. Yeah. But they use the other, the Quran, too. Don't Some they? do. Mm hmm. Some do. Yep. Most don't put their hand on anything anymore. They have no allegiance to anything. So uh, we don't even put our hands over our hearts anymore and say the Pledge of Allegiance or the National Anthem. Too busy kneeling for it and doing all that kind of stuff. Not this group. <sighs> no. I, but that's, that's disconcerting in that we have devolved as a society into a place where we have forgotten from whence we came. Their law is based on something. If you don't have a higher lawgiver, uh, then everything is useless because there is no law. So ultimately, I contend that all things do go back, as, as we were talking about yesterday, it ultimately goes back to the ultimate lawgiver, who is God. And if God's going to give you the law, then you know you have an accountability before God to obey that law. Which our forefathers based our nation on. Yeah, they, they recognized a higher accountability. Correct. These days, we've stopped doing all of that. Again, I want to talk about some of that stuff on Monday. We're going to delve into the religion of socialism. That's a good title for that, the religion of socialism. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm going to get me one of them fecal maps for Austin, what we're going to do. I bet there's already one. I don't think so. Look it up. San Francisco is such a beautiful, so pretty city. Beautiful skyline, so much, but they have just ruined it. Just absolutely ruined it. Um, what is it about these big cities, man? And and I know what it is, but it's just it's it's just I hate that. If you want to see the ultimate of of human nature, just run roughshod. Get into the urban areas and just see how people behave. It's really bad really bad it's a damn shame um but i mean what do i know i was sarah gonzalez's work husband shoving dollar bills down strippers garters and stuff like that wow 
Ah. We told you to go up there and get like work. Dance. Don't shove the dollars. Make some money. You get up there and <laughs> yes, dance. Yes, Sarah. Come on. Get it together, guys. You push guys. the baby out. Let's get going. Not her. You. Oh, I was supposed to strip. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that. All right. Literally. You'd be surprised. What are you laughing at, Puppet Master? Literally nobody wants to see that. It was just a COVID cough. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Puppet pretty Master's good. kind of been speaking more today, kind of in the background. A little since bit. came back telling you man i want to get action figures of this crew i don't know where to get them though i looked them up i don't want a bobblehead i want action figures that's good yeah they're expensive bobblehead be cool you know how expensive <laughs> those are they're like three or four hundred bucks oh you can get it for about a hundred bucks but oh we'll see it's a lot cheaper than i thought i want to know how did i ever tell you what diamond and silk gave me whenever i went down to a speaking no. engagement with them no they gave me a signed picture of themselves uh-huh. and their bobbleheads. <laughs> That's what they gave me, diamond and silk. They're cute. That was the way they, well, I mean, a little, uh, some money would have been nice. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, that one on top of a, like a, a fee for coming down to speak? You, I went and participated in their event, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. And spoke and, and was on an open forum with them and all yep. that. And, and you, I didn't go down there for money, but I yeah. didn't go down there for bobbleheads either. <laughs> <laughs> or signed picture. Do you still have the bobbleheads in your deal? Can you stay off your phone long enough to participate I'm in the show? I'm doing other business. We have, Stop. We, we got a business. show to do. I know. Uh, Stop. But Do you still have the bobbleheads? No. You get rid of them? I, I gave them to someone that needed them. Who? Someone that needed... <laughs> No one fan. needed Dominus Silk well, bobbleheads. He okay, given... that's where I gave them to somebody that didn't need them. He's gay. He gave away my I honorarium. Taken them, but I... he gave away my honorarium. I'm sure they're laying around somewhere. I don't know exactly where he they gave are, them though. away. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's heart wrenching to me. Their heads do do that. I can't though. watch. I can't watch them go. <laughs> they rode around in the trunk of the car for like a year. That's the was there for a while. <laughs> It was there for a while. I'm going to be in, uh, we're, we're in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida all weekend long. That's what I was just talking about. West Palm phone. Improv. Six Let's shows. do this before we advance right. the show that's already happening. Six shows? Six shows. That's exactly right. All weekend long. So people need to go to watchchad.com and get their tickets uh, and all the info. And then where are we going to next? Oh, we got to go to uh, the end of the month. We're in Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville, yeah. South Carolina. Could be interesting. We got to sell some tickets in West Palm Beach. I'm telling you, some folks need to show up or it's just going to be me and a dozen people singing Kumbaya in a circle. Those are fun, though. But are they? Yeah, for them. Yeah. Yeah, they got They're not that the best fun. deal. They're, yeah, well, I mean, it will. I know how to handle the smaller crowds. Yeah. We'll, we'll sit around and, and make a fun little night of it. We'll mm -hmm. toast some s'mores uh, and have coffee and or cocoa. And I'll sing them songs like Flip You Like a Pancake. Yes. If nobody shows up, come join me in Clifton this weekend. No, I'll still be in West Palm Beach. All right. No, I, I, I got guaranteed money and a bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> They're paying me in more than bobbleheads, baby. Woohoo! Yee, yee, yee! You going to go swim in the, on the beach? No. Over there? I don't get in the water, son. <laughs> you know me. Like huh? in the ocean. I don't get in ocean water. Okay, because there's... Things can take you. That, well, yeah. It's true. Uh, look at this. Look at this right here. Just raise up Come your here. shirt. And show look on. at this. Mm. Beach bod. Oh, it's my beach body beach right well there. Bod. I'm starting to put on my winter girth. <laughs> I am. You know why? My steaks. I love it. I ate a lot of beef. Me too. I ate a lot of meat. Me too. I go to, I'm a carnivore. And I know you guys don't have any doubt, but I'm picky about it, all right? Uh, my butcher knows me. My meat cutter knows me. They're running hide at the HEB when they see me coming. But here's the thing. You don't have to settle for inferior meat. I want to tell you about my good friends over at Omaha Steaks. Right now, you can get a gourmet assortment of bestsellers with an exclusive offer just for my audience. If you go to omahasteaks.com and in the search bar, enter the code PRATHER, P-R-A-T-H-E-R, 
If you'll do that this week, Omaha Steaks is going to add two pounds of premium ground beef free with your order. That's two pounds premium ground beef. Feed the big family. Hey, get the Butcher's Best Sellers Package. Butcher's Best Sellers Package. It includes the famous bacon wrap filet mignon. It's got smoky sweet bacon, fork, tender filet mignon. It's incredible. Omaha Steaks been bringing people together for over 100 years. Fantastic meats. Enjoy family. Enjoy friends. Enjoy the best steak of your life. Go to omahasteaks.com. Enter Prather in the search bar for exclusive offers that are not available anywhere else. And don't forget, when you order today, Omaha Steaks is going to add two pounds of premium ground beef for free. We will be right back. Do you like to travel? Love. We talked about pooping in San Francisco. Do you like to travel? I do love to travel. Is there something about traveling that you don't like? Mm. Like, is there an aspect to it? Packing, okay. the airport. No, I, it's all exciting because it's all part of the plan and women like to plan. So is I, it? I don't is think it? there's... This she is rhetorical. doesn't do it enough, Steve. You don't I was going to say, I can answer. list all the things that Chad hates about traveling. I was going to say, Let's this is it. rhetorical. All you're, you're asking me a question so we could all hear your answer, because I know that you, there's No, plenty. I wanted to know if there was something you hated. I don't travel enough like you well, that's true. to hate it that much. And yours is for work, too. No, so. no, no. I do it because I love it. Okay. I do what I do because I love it. I, okay. Otherwise, there's no way in hell I'd go out there and do as much as I do. I did a lot of travel for work yes, in the past, did. a lot. Um, but I, I was thinking for travel, I was thinking more vacation. And so that's always happy for me. Yeah. Well. Okay. For the most part, Chad doesn't have a problem with, you know, packing. That's, you know, that's kind of normal routine Because I stuff. never really unpack. Right. Yeah. Suitcase so ready. The first thing would be parking at the airport or valeting at the airport, going through that process. And then there's checking bags. He doesn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh he doesn't like boarding <laughs> okay <laughs> he doesn't like flying doesn't believe in flying doesn't believe it exists um so then we get to the next destination he hates waiting on bags hates rental car companies dealing with them completely that and, right there is the bane of my existence and that's where I, that's the point i want to make rental, rental car companies okay so the other day I had reserved a car with one rental car company because the one I normally use was sold out at this location. This was Salt Lake City. I get up there. The line is through the little snaky maze thing and all the way down the, the, the little open area there. How long of a wait was it? Two-hour wait. <gasps> Two-hour wait to get up to the rental counter to get your car. I wouldn't do it. Now, I'd already paid for this car yeah. in full, like $500. You can't cancel. Couldn't cancel it. So you know what I did? Walked my happy ass down to Hertz and rented a different car. Okay. And paid for that one in full. So technically rented two cars, yeah. one non-refundable. But there was no way I was waiting in that line. We couldn't do. We couldn't wait in that line anyway because, I mean, we come we into the city. We had to go. We have sound checks. We have load in that kind of thing so it's time is more valuable than standing in that line for sure but car rental companies just how slow they are how long it takes for them to process you at that window yeah and just say here's your car sign this paper do you want insurance no do you want to fill it up with gas no all right Here's your keys. Off you go. You're 17 miles away walking to get to the car. <laughs> Just go. And it's true. They, I, I mean, how is it that every car they're renting is at the very back of the parking lot? Mm -hmm. It is. And now you got to drag all your shit all the way out there. All the way out there. And you're halfway to the venue. You are. Yeah. Like, I could have walked it. You get in, you go two blocks, you're at the Hampton Inn. That's basically the way this thing works. And then when you come back to turn the car in, 
they wave you through like, give us our damn car back. And they're like, put it here. Put it here. One more foot. Pull it forward. Yeah. One more foot. What's wrong with you? True I feel story. like I'm unloading at boot camp. Double time. Hut, 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 hut. And, and then they're like, did you put gas in the damn thing? That's the way I interpret it. They really don't talk to you like that. But that's the way I feel. Did you put gas in it? Mm-hmm. Jeez, well, Dad. And all you really want to do is just back up over those pokey things and get out. Yes, you, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> well, I have a huge <laughs> surprise for you when we go down to Palm Beach. I'm so excited about it. We're having a car service. We got a car service. Oh. Got It'll a car already service. be there. Picking us up, dropping us off. Six They're going to be holding a sign with Prather's name on it. Really? Yes. Sometimes we'll use a car service. And let me tell you something. Nothing excites me more. But you know what I hate about the car rental process the most? Mm-hmm. The shuttle bus. The shuttle bus. I have to climb on to a COVID-ridden, disease-saturated shuttle bus with all of our bags, and there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> and wait for the bus to fill up. And you got to wait for the bus to fill up. Ugh. And you got to sit there, and you got to wait. And you got to touch strangers. And I don't like it. And you got to drive, you know, and you got to bounce around the thing. And this guy's like, we want to welcome you to Portland, Oregon. Uh, if this is your first time here, just if you blah 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 blah, no, shut up and drive that bus. <laughs> just get me there. Anyway, I hate that process. I hate rental cars. Okay. I hate dealing with that stuff. So anyway, we do have the car service, and I'm excited about that. Now we well, can't get anywhere once we get there. But like we were in Salt Lake City the other week, we rented the SUV, drove it down to where we are drove it back <laughs> we never had to even get gas in it no nice. it stayed full the entire time yes because I mean, everywhere we went was within a block of where we were staying hotel and club were a block away yeah. so it was like pull over there and pull back i would say this is a first world complaint but i don't know two hours in a line doesn't seem very first world to me no it's ridiculous and i knew when i walked up i looked at steve i looked at kyle and i said not doing it and I checked with some people that were finished. No, and they said, no, it's every bit of two hours. And you're not eligible for a fast pass. I am if I rent with budget. Okay, but this, this one doesn't know you. Right. So I use budget. And the problem is with coronavirus going on, you might as well not even have a membership to any of it. Okay. Because they have apparently, apparently just being able to walk out and grab the keys like you should be able to do with budgets fast break, just grabbing the keys yeah. and going and getting in your car because it has your name already assigned on it because you took the extra steps to join their freaking membership. Apparently, apparently that opens you up to disease or something. Okay. Like right now, like walking over to the, the, the kiosk and just picking up your keys and paperwork right. and walking and just driving off. Where no one is. Right. Apparently that, now you have to wait in line with other human beings to get up there and confirm your stuff so that the person up there behind the plexiglass wearing a mask mm -hmm. and touch all over their little keypad that every person on the freaking planet has touched that day. Yeah. And you'll have three. See you'll my have point? <laughs> even, if you're, even if you are not a member there, why can't you do all of this online? Right. Everything. Decide insurance, it's all, it's decide all gas. It's all prepaid. Everything online. And then all you do is show your ID. And you exactly. can even sign. You could do DocuSign exactly. online. And why don't they do that? Exactly. I do all of those things. You still do all of those things. And, and you wait know what? two you hours. Gotta get there. You got to go, hi, my name is Prather. Uh, it's like the word rather, but with a P in front of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Chad. Okay. Uh, well, Hey, you guys have an SUV out there? Mm -hmm. or do you need an SUV? Could you, t could you take a, a Fiat? Uh, you have a lot of luggage. Okay. What about, what about one of our coupes? Uh-huh. Uh, he says he needs an SUV. Like he said online. He says he needs it. We don't have an SUV. Um, what about, you sure you can't use the coupe? He really needs the SUV. Oh, it'll be here in four hours? Okay. Oh, I'm mad for you now. I'm yeah. really worked up for you. That's so frustrating. So we take the coop. 
Do you know how many times? Yeah. Do you know how many times I've had to call out car rental companies on mm -hmm. Twitter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're like, "We would love to solve this problem for you." Would you? If you would DM us and tell us the problem and your rental number, I'm like, what are you going to do? Do you know that to this day, I can't rent with Enterprise. Can't <sighs> rent with them. Can't the rent with them anywhere in the nation. Because they know your past, or no? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Because I, I had to keep a car an extra day one time. Oh, come on. Called them on the phone, went in there, turned it in. They were like, okay, your bill's all clear. Okay, well, I need to pay you for an extra day. No, you're set. Then they're like, six weeks later, you owe us $73. Okay, well, let me pay it. Well, you can't pay us. You got to call in the corporate. Call in the corporate. Now you need to call the local. Oh, wait. Local says you got to call the corporate. Oh, okay, well, can I, can I, how do I pay this $73? I actually went into the enterprise place and said, I want to pay this. Paid it, Mark. I paid it. You know what? They don't have a record that I ever paid it. They don't have a record that I ever paid it. Let me tell you mm -hmm. another story. Okay. I can't rent with budget in Atlanta. Biggest airport in America. I can't rent with budget in Atlanta. You know why? Because we turned in a car one morning at 5 a.m. There was nobody there to check it in. So you know what? The dumbasses didn't run the little scanner of it when they showed up for work. So it looked like I'd stolen the car. Two days later, they call us. We're in Virginia. Hey, where's our car? In your garage. Sorry, Candace. <laughs> and that's what, and, and that's what I said. In your garage where I turned it in. Mm -hmm. And they're independently owned outside of the yeah, network. They're not, they're not budget corporate. They're, they're so big. They're their own company in Atlanta. Budget is. Can't rent with budget in Atlanta. Do not rent. You know they have like nine rental car places, but they're all owned by three companies. They're owned by three. No, they're only by, you got Hertz, you got budget, and you got some other asshole. Enterprise. And they own like three or four other ones. Yeah, and they own all. So like Avis and all that, Hertz. Dollar is Hertz. It's like the three little bears. Mm -hmm. It's like Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. And if you're ever stuck renting with Baby Bear, you are screwed, Natalie. Built Bar. You rent Got the one. same cars, different prices. Built Bar. Look, I'm Best testing one. protein bar there is. I'm telling you, I just had one for lunch. They're great. They got 18 amazing flavors. You got the nine chocolate nut flavors, nine chocolate nut free flavors, 100% covered in chocolate. Soft and easy to chew. Built bars are healthy. Built bar is great for a health conscious guy. You want to lose, maintain some weight while lose or maintain some weight? Maybe do both. While indulging in a delicious treat, you get these bars that are low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. Just go to builtbar.com. Use promo code Chad. You'll get 20% off your first order. Use promo code Chad. 20% off at Built Bar. Go there today. Be right back. You listen to talk radio? Yes. Do you? Party foul and I do. Every I morning. do. Who's your favorite? You have a favorite? Glenn Beck. Oh, somebody's sucking up to sucking the man. Up. Well, I listen to him and I really do listen to Dana Lash as well. I I like uh, Andrew Wilkow. Oh, and Ben Shapiro, even though his voice is really hard to listen to, but he's really smart. Ben Shapiro. Yeah. I do Wilkow, Wilkow and Webb. <laughs> I won't even and, go into him back. What's when that? He, I do Wilco, wet David Webb. Oh, okay. Uh, Glenn Beck David Webb. sometimes. But when Ben read Cardi B's lyrics to WAP, have y'all ever heard that? Oh, yeah. Epic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the things. This article is talking about how talk radio is turning millions of Americans into conservatives. Mm. Um, oh, how dare it? Mm -hmm. But it's a big deal. I uh, Conservative broadcasters have never forgotten. It is key reason that a conspiracist mindset has such a grip on listeners. Since 2003, Rush Limbaugh, who got his start working in, in radio as a teenager in the mid-1960s, has mentioned 
the Fairness Doctrine on nearly 150 episodes. He credits the rise of talk radio to the lifting of the Fairness Doctrine in 1987 by the Reagan administration, and he worries that the left could at any moment use a revived Fairness Doctrine to silence conservative radio. As Mr. Limbaugh put it in January, they've been trying to nullify or negate me for three decades. This suspicion that elite institutions, the media, universities, government, big tech, are run by hostile liberal gatekeepers seeking to silence conservative voices continues to fuel right-wing anxiety. It also helps explain conservative support for Trump, who can be accused of many things but not of failing to speak his mind. When you believe that all politicians lie but that only liberal politicians rig the game, you're more likely to vote for someone who you think will fight back even if they lie along the way. Take Talk Radio's role in spreading COVID denialism. At each stage of the backlash against government recommendations for fighting the pandemic, Talk Radio hosts prepared the way for broader conservative resistance. Indeed, many of Trump's own talking points about the virus, like comparing it to the flu and accusing Jane of weaponizing the virus, echoed ideas already spreading on talk radio shows. Conservative Talk Radio will march to Trump's drum, but no matter what happens in November, it will also outlast him. Talk Radio emits much too power a signal to fade silently into the ether. It's all true. Well, I mean, how dare they have speak their mind? On the radio? On the radio. Well, guess what? TV is the opposite. So they've got, you know, picture, and I guess conservatives have have radio. Well, you know, video kill the radio star. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So that's I'm just going to go with that. Uh, (laughs) But no, you know what? God bless talk radio. God bless yeah. the Blaze and and Mercury One and and, uh, and Mercury Radio, and and uh, all these guys that are out here who are doing it. You know how hard it is to come out there and put yourself on the line day in and day out for hours at a time, like David Webb does, like Will Cow does, like Sean Hannity does, like mm-hmm. Rush does. Um, you know, Glenn, of course, is the master. Mm-hmm. Comes out there and does it, and it's a good, entertaining show. Uh, and they won't give me one. They won't give me a talk radio show. They just won't do it. They don't believe in me enough. Not here at the Blaze, Candace. Well, maybe you're too pretty. They no, want to put you no, on camera. No, you're not. on camera for everybody to yeah, see. Yeah, but no. They won't do it. They won't do it. Think about how much better than Jeffy Fisher we are. Right? I mean, think about how much better we are than Jeffy. Think about how much better we are than, let's say, um, Jeffy. <laughs> I sort of kid. Jeffy's Jeffy's the consummate professional. Yeah. Eater. Um, but uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been after him forever saying, Hey, why don't you give us a radio show? We can talk about nothing forever. And they but didn't no, like that? They didn't like they that. They didn't like it. But I'll tell you, Will Cow's the master. Will Cow is the master. Andrew Will Cow. If you're not listening to him, you you need to be listening to him and, and watch okay. his show uh on The Blaze as well. Mm-hmm. He's that a nice right. guy in person, too. No, oh, yeah. We love Andrew's always great. Uh, hang out at CPAC and spend a little time together. And drink a little beer, have a little Prosecco. And the hot gay guy. Who's that? On You've had him on here before. Oh, Dave Rubin? Yeah. I talked to Dave the other day, as a matter of fact. He's hot. So my agent, of course, who's gay, he mm-hmm. goes, do you know this guy? And he <laughs> sends me a picture. He's out in L.A. And it's a picture of Dave Rubin sitting there at some cafe, and it's like he's snarking him with like a paparazzi picture. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's Dave Rubin. He goes, oh, my God, he is so hot. <laughs> I was like, we all, we all pretty much think so. <laughs> I said, go over and tell him hi. He goes, call him on the phone. And so I was like, all right. So I gave Dave a shout. I said, you're, you're getting uh, gawked at by my agent. He's like, yeah, he just came over here and said hi. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's one of the weirdest little exchanges I've ever been a part of. But uh, anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, Dave Rubin. Dave's good. Dave's super smart. Chad super Prater, yeah. the matchmaker. The matchmaker. Yeah. I'm just hooking people up. Well, you know, Dave is married to uh, his husband, Dave, which is, so it's Dave and Dave. Mm-hmm. Dave squared. Dave and squared. He's good looking, too. Uh, I, I'm going to go with a yeah. Okay. I don't really, I mean, I don't know. Well, you, you, I mean, I can look at Dave Rubin and know that, yeah, that's you know, a good, that's looking, a good man. looking man. Yeah. That's a good looking man. I mean, he's no Mark Tate, but she's no, 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 Who no. He really is. Don't even compare. No, for sure. I mean, Rubin's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> 
pretty good. <laughs> a lot of handsome on Blaze TV. That's what I'm telling you. A lot of handsome. And that's where you are. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. That's why mm-hmm. you're on TV, not radio. That's what I said. See, Agree. Steve wasn't paying attention. Steve's right. <laughs> he wasn't, wasn't listening. listening. He was still nope. standing in the rental car line. No, I was thinking. <laughs> what, I, I was thinking. Mark was thinking. He was thinking. I'm not gay. You know. You know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> one like, other I'm thing. Straight. You know. One other thing about rental car companies. Oh gosh. I always rent the cars. I always put them on my account. I'm always registered as the driver. I never drive them. So I give my driver's license to Steve when we have to check the paperwork on the way out, and he always hands them my driver's license. Now, I don't know if y'all figure this out or not, but Steve and I don't look alike. Not a lot. And and so Steve, <laughs> st- <laughs> in my, my driver's my license, definitely doesn't look like Steve. Steve <laughs> looks like Dave Grohl on his driver's license if Dave Grohl got arrested after a hard night at, at, of drinking and fighting at the Waffle House. Um, He's to being country Jesus. But none of them, none of the Iranians that work at the little cubicle <laughs> have ever questioned it. They've never questioned whether they just think all white people look the same. That's right. And that is racist. That is. Or they that just don't care. They don't care. Yeah. They're like, you know what, white man, steal our vehicle. <laughs> we know you'll probably bring it back. <laughs> Did you put gas in it? Make sure everything is out of the console. Okay. (laughs) Be right back. (laughs) The, uh, a lot of times these folks who host our shows, whether the club owners or venue promoters or buyers or whatever, if the sales are a little slim, they're like, well, we don't understand. We, we're promoting. Are you promoting? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's all we do is promote. <laughs> I get in trouble for promoting too much. And they're like, well, we're spending money on social media. And I'm like, well, then you're not doing it correctly. Mm. Because my stuff gets seen for the most part. Um, and I also have this national television show here that is available to everyone. Tens of thousands of people watching it, even as we speak. And I'm telling them, come out and see us, West Palm Beach, Florida, at the Improv. We're there all weekend long. Watch Chad.com, where all the fun stuff is, has all the information that you need. Hot news, Natalie. Natalie. I bet if you traveled with us, we'd have an easier time at the rental car companies. You think? Yeah. I still don't think they care. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. And, you know, Steve's my road manager, and Steve doesn't reserve any cars. He doesn't go up there and rent them. He doesn't do it, but he does drive them. Yeah. All the stuff that I hate, he doesn't do. That's why I'm li- <laughs> I lined up a car service for you. That's why we do that everywhere we go. I, I'm trying to. Um, that's why we get off the thing, and I immediately, I'm like, Steve, you wait for the bags, because I hate doing that, too. Mm-hmm. I'll jump on the shuttle and go get the car and bring it back, pick him up, flip it over. That way, if, if the drugs come through and the dogs smell it, it's all on it's Steve. It's all on Steve. Country it's Jesus. It's all on Steve. Country Jesus. Yep. Right there. Country Jesus. Good looking man. <laughs> he is handsome, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Look at Y'all just look at him. Look at him. To there be Jesus. Is. Can we just take a minute and yeah. remind the world that Dave Rubin has nothing on Party Foul Steve? Yep. I mean, nothing. I'm going to have to go look up Dave Rubin, what he looks like. Except the I husband. Don't remember. Na- He's I mean, been he on was this here with show. Us. He was with us. <laughs> I don't remember what he oh looks like. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Watch Chad.com for Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, and the perfectionist puppet master, Mark. We love y'all. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.